Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right, hopefully it's not so windy that you can't hear my voice over this noise here, the wind. But some of you are wondering about basic stuff like procedures of how I do everything, like how I get up, how I get ready for bed, how I eat, how I clean. Um, a lot of this stuff was covered on the playlist. And I know some of you don't want to watch the vlogs. Maybe because, you know, it seems overwhelming to look at 1,700 videos. <laughs> Basically, there's 1,700 videos. But a lot of the earlier videos cover all this stuff already. But I'm going to do some right now. And I'm actually contemplating taking the original videos and putting it on another channel and running it like, um, you know, like one video a day or, or one or two videos a day, maybe three videos a day on the new channel. And those of you who are new to the channel but don't want to watch the playlist, because it's hard when you watch the playlist. I don't know if it, like, doesn't let you come back and resume or what. But I will put those videos. I'm thinking of going with the whole vlog. Although I might skip some episodes. I don't know. I don't know if I should just reproduce it as is and put it all on the new channel and maybe delete it from this channel. Still debating about that. But if I run the videos on a new channel... And send you guys there to watch that new channel, those of you who are new and want to watch from the beginning. So you can see basically how I did everything from when I first uh, moved back into the van about three years ago with $3 in my pocket. You know, how things kind of progressed and what I did to clean dishes and take a shower and do laundry and survive basically till now, which we're still not out of this mess. <laughs> It's like, we're right back where we started. Not really. Um, YouTube is now earning enough money that it is covering child support, so I'm breathing a little bit easier. If I can keep cranking out more videos, and if you guys continue to support me by watching the videos, um, you know, I can make ad revenue to the point where I might be able to make a living from doing YouTube. I won't be rich or anything, but I could have enough to actually cover child support and some minimal living expenses. But anyhow, I am going to start off this video by showing you a little bit about how I do dishes and stuff when I finish. I just did a, a cooking with Dinoy episode where we did some shish kebabs out here at the compound. And the mukbang, yeah, I guess that's how you pronounce it, mukbang video where I ate it. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> but... I started to clean the dishes and put things up and then realized, you know what? For those people who haven't done this before, this might be something that they are interested in. And it's basically doing dishes like you would at home, but um, using less water. Now, some people actually don't even use water. They use vinegar, okay? Now, me, I kind of go more traditional when I have spare water like I do right now. I have some water in here in this dispenser. And you can see I had to take the lid open to let air in because when you push the lever here and let water out, it has to pull air in to replace the displaced water. Otherwise, if I leave the lid on it, there's a vacuum and the water will eventually stop. But I actually use this and I'll put my dishes or, or spoons or whatever under it and just wet, wet it or I'll get a paper towel and wet it and wipe it down. I don't use this whole thing. I only use like maybe to wash per meal, maybe a half a cup or less of water total. And that's what I do when I'm out in the open like this and have access to running water. I guess you can consider that running water because it runs when you pull the, the lever. But like I'll put the plate under here. Normally I do this with two hands. I hold it like that and I push the water lever, but in this case, I'm just going to wet it like that. You can see I just put a little bit of water on it, not a lot, and I slish it around. And if I wanted to, I could add a little bit, like one drop of um, dishwasher soap. But most of the time, I don't even bother with that. I just slish it around a little bit, get it wet. Then I get a paper towel, which I'll get right now. I don't know if the camera will let me set up here. Let me try to set this on camera. Basically, I just wet it down a little bit with some water, and I just get a paper towel, and I wipe, and that's it. I wipe all the food off, and if I need to, I add a little bit more water. You can see here, like, this with some grease and stuff on there. It may not be the cleanest, but it's clean enough for me, you know. But that's it, uh, and if I need more water, I can put this under the, the little water container thingy. My faucet, my sink, if you want to call it that. Or I can take my sprayer. This is what I do when I'm in um, the city stealth. I actually spray it with water like that. And I wipe until it's clean. Now, some people actually don't use water. They use vinegar. They'll put vinegar in here. You know, just regular vinegar. 
or sometimes they'll mix water and vinegar. And you can spray it and that will sterilize it. So you can do that if you want to have it sterilize. Me, I'm not too worried about it. I just clean it and, you know, I wipe it and make sure that it looks shiny and clean. And that's good enough for me. I don't go my crazy way. If I wanted to make it super clean, I will actually put um, soap on it, like one drop of soap. Um, you know, spray it, rinse it, then spray it with regular water and wipe it until, you know, there's more soap on it. And then it's pretty much done. But in this case, for this particular one, it's done. And, you know, I have two of them, but I only use the top one. So I just wipe it, make sure there's no food on it. And I put it up. And that's how I do my dishes. Now, the, the, the spoons and stuff, I do the same thing. I, I soak it underwater, you know, and then, or I can spray it like that. Take a towel and just wipe. You can see it's hardly using any water because water is a precious commodity when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Now, if I'm at a um, rest stop or a park and I have water, you know, obviously I don't spray it like this. I just run it under the sink and I clean it. But this is wiped down, it's clean. I put it back into my storage unit. I know some of you think I love Pringles. <laughs> it's actually a little holder for me. And I put all my stuff in it, put the lid on it, and it's safe and clean. And then I only pull it out when I need it. I basically cleared everything out. As you can see, you know, I just have to wipe this down. And what I do for the table, of course, is just like you would clean a regular table. But in this case, I don't mind if all this, the, what's that, body <laughs> ends up on the floor. But instead of wetting it down and smudging it everywhere, I'll take a dry paper towel and just wipe it down and um, get this cleared off. Then I might spray it. So this is just how I clean up afterwards when I have the table out. It's rare that I put the table out, but that's because most of the time I'm in the city, you know. But when I'm out in the, um, at the beach or at the campground or something where I actually have um, some privacy or space where I can set things up, like here at the compound, you'll see me set it up. And if I want to, of course, I can wipe everything down here with water. I don't use too many cleaners and stuff because I think, it's, one, it's expensive. Two, I don't really think I need it, even though, you know, they say it disinfects and all that. Some people are into that. Me, just water. This is just water in here. So I just spray it down with water and I just wipe it clean. That's good enough for me. Now, you know, having worked in um, the food services and stuff when I was over at the Cape, we did use disinfectant, not just water. We actually had to spray disinfectant and wipe down. But on my little table here, you can see I have some dust and stuff on it. I just use water. I guess um, if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to disinfect it, I could use vinegar. I could spray it with vinegar and wipe it down and that'll disinfect it. So just a tip for those of you who wanted to know routines and how things are done or how I do things. By the way, this I bought from Goodwill for $1.99. That was what I paid for it. And it replaces my, um, if you watch the original playlist, you'll see I had a dispenser that was made from um, laundry detergent holder which served me really well but you know the the rubber bulb thingy after three years of use it kind of bit the dust it had holes in it and it didn't work so well it was leaking everywhere so I got rid of it and I bought this one for two dollars which I think you could probably get new for probably five to seven dollars maybe ten dollars but I got it for two dollars from Goodwill um, to be honest, I like the other one better. It was smaller and easier to use than this one because it just pushed the bulb. This one, you got to release it. And the other one, when you push the bulb, it let air in. This one, when, I guess the other one you had to open up after a while too, just like this. Whenever you let water out of a system like this, yeah, it's closed. When you let water out, what happens is the water comes out and there's a vacuum in there. And at a certain point, the vacuum becomes strong and won't let any more water out. So you have to open the top to let air flow through. And I guess that's why I don't like this one as much, is the, the top is so big on here, opening it kind of a pain in the butt. And when I store it, I don't store it like this inside. 
Not unless I had a, you know, my camper set up differently, because I think it's not leaking. It looks like it's holding pretty well, not dripping. See, it only, it only comes out when you actually push it. So you could make a sink system with this and have this as your faucet, you know, dispensing water, which is pretty cool. I might do that in a future build. But I store it vertical just to keep it from dripping at all. And then when I want to use it, I basically, you know, I just store it here like this and here, vertical. And then I have to flip it over on the edge here to use it, which is kind of a pain. You know, it doesn't seem like it would be a pain, but it is. So that's kind of how I do dishes, how I clean up. And you can see I, I try to leave the place as clean as I found it. It looks like some other people were here, though, since I've been here last, because I can see some water bottles here and some plastic. So some other people have been using this camp. I can see water bottles all over. So I hope they clean up and don't just leave all this trash out here because this is a really good spot. You know, I, I left wood here to be used. I brought some more fronds to be used. It makes a really nice campfire area. Because um, it's safer than um, lighting out in the field or something when you have a pavement area. And this is kind of enclosed, so it kind of blocks the wind somewhat. And you can cook, you know, safely because you don't want the fire hitting the brush and you set the whole compound on fire. <laughs> They've done that before, believe me. And you don't want to be the guy that does that. So I try to cook in, you know, an area where I know that I can control the fire. And that's why something like this hobo stove or the rocket stove that I made or even the cinder block stove is important. I don't like making an open fire just because, you know, if you have enough open campfire situation it can blow all over the place but if you have it inside the container like this it's very much under control and then what i do with this like to make sure it's out the fire is out i actually will spray you can see i spray on there and i make sure it's all burnt out so and then i dump it and i spray it again after i dump it it's to make sure that See, cause you can see the smoke coming out because evidently, even though it had burned out, it wasn't completely out. I want to make sure when I dump it, it's completely out, which you see in the other dumpings right there that I have in the other section. But I will dump it and, you know, stir through it with uh, one of these other ones. I basically spray everything and make sure it is burnt out before I leave. I don't ever leave it smoldering because... All it would take is a uh, wind blowing it into the brush there, and the whole place catches on fire again. You know, so... I say again because some people have caught this place on fire, and it's not a pretty sight. It's got to make it so that people can't come out here, you know. So you got to you gotta kind of not bring trash. So if you're watching this video and you're one of those people who brought this trash out, please don't do this. You know, I might go ahead and pick this up and take it out with me, but... I'm not going to walk around the entire compound and clean up other people's mess. I try to take what I can, so I'll probably take these bottles with me. And then I take it and I'll go dump it at a dumpster or something, you know, back in the city. <laughs> it should really go into recycling, but recycling around here, they, they, it's a little bit difficult, let me put it that way. If they had a little simple recycling bin that you could just put it in, I'd do that. It's not even for the money, it's just for the recycling. But in this case... They removed all those recycling bins, as far as I can tell. So I just dump it into the dumpster, which is bad. But I think that's better than leaving it out here all over the place. So anyhow, uh, try to think of stuff like that. You know, when you're out using an area like this, whether it be here or even Walmart. I had an incident the other day. That wasn't me, but I was parked under a tree, you know, in the shade. Because that's what you try to do to stay cool. Which I guess we'll do an episode on that. Trying to stay cool out here in the heat. But um, I uh, was parked under the tree cleaning my van. And the man next to me also had a, he had a truck or van. And he was cleaning his truck or van. And then a third van pulled up with some lady and a kid. And they started just dumping all their stuff on the ground. Yeah. So the man next to me in his van, he went over to them and said, Hey, the trash can's over there. And instead of thanking him, they started yelling at him and told him to mind his own business and started cussing at him and saying they knew where the trash was and all that. And they were going to throw it away anyways. He needed to mind his own business. But, you know, I've seen where people just take their crap out and dump it at the Walmart parking lot. 
And that's how you make it so that Walmart doesn't allow overnight camping or even people to park there and clean their vehicle out. So make sure that if you do stuff like that, you don't even look like you're dumping it. Let's say you are planning on cleaning it up, but you just toss it on the ground and then you're going to pick it up later. Don't do that. Get a bag, clean your car, put it into the bag, and then carry it to the trash. Don't make it look like you're dumping, even if you're not planning on dumping, because this is what happens. People leave crap everywhere. And then, next thing you know, nobody's allowed to use this place anymore. So, just something to keep in mind. Um, you should try to, you know, if you're new to van dwelling and stuff, build that into your routine that you should try to, any place you go to, you should try to leave it the same as you found it or better. Like, like in this case, I'm going to leave it a little bit better. I'm not going to clean everything. But I am going to take up uh, these little obvious uh, plastic bins and bottles and stuff that somebody dumped over here and take them out with me to take to the dumpster. So I'll do that, you know, because I use this spot and I don't want them trashing it and making it a dump, basically, because that's what they're turning it into. But um, if you happen to be at a Walmart parking lot or Planet Fitness or any other parking lot and you're cleaning a vehicle, put your trash into a bag and then take the bag and dump it into the trash can. Don't leave it on the ground and make it look like you're leaving trash because that just makes it bad for everyone. And I say that from the bottom of my heart. And if someone tells you, you know, because they don't know, they're telling you to please make sure you put it up. Don't get mad and yell at them. They're trying to make sure that you're allowed to keep doing that. Because, you know, the behavior that you're showing where it looks like, even if you weren't going to do it, but it looks like you were going to just dump trash into somebody's parking lot is the kind of stuff that makes it so they have all those rules coming up saying no parking, no overnight parking, no whatever. Okay? So don't ruin a good thing. But um, on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign out. I hope you found this video uh, useful, especially with the cleaning. If you want to learn more, you want to watch the playlist from the very beginning where you're going to see everything. I am going to, but like I said, I, I've been suggesting that and suggesting that, but people aren't doing it because I guess they don't want to go or there's a problem with going to the playlist. So I think maybe with this video, I am going to go ahead and start a new channel or take one of my old channels and rename it to living in a van archive and I am going to start putting videos on there from number one on through it's gonna be the same videos that are on this channel but they're gonna be running as if they were new and until that channel gets monetized you can watch them ad free that should help you catch up and instead of trying to watch everything all at once which is what I think is happening and people are getting overwhelmed um, I think we're going to put up like one or two videos, maybe three videos a day, one or two, maybe three, that way you can catch up. Maybe we'll do three a day on that channel. And what I'll do is, I've got to download those videos, but I'm going to download them and um, put them up on there, and basically you can watch them as if they were new videos, and you get to watch them ad-free, you get to see the story from the beginning, and um, I might remove some videos if they're you know, impertinent if they're not important. And then on this particular channel, I'm not sure if I'm going to start removing videos. Because there's a lot of videos nobody's watching. Basically those old videos because they're so buried. So we may have to streamline this channel and, and cut down all the videos. We're up to roughly, I think, 1,700 videos. And out of that, maybe only about two, 300 people are actually watching. The rest are buried and lost. So I'm going to dig them up. And run them on the new channel. Look for the new channel. I think it's going to probably be Living in a Van Archive is what I think I'm going to call it. And it's basically going to have be a copy of this channel with the older videos. And I think I will be removing them from this channel. I'm not sure yet. Let me know if I should remove them or leave them here and there. But um, this way, people who are new, because since the channel has been born three years ago, you know, we started the channel, I think, with 200 when we started. 200 people came with me. Two to 400 people came with me from the Living in a Van group on Facebook to join me on YouTube. And uh, since then, we've grown to over 10,000. So all these newcomers may not have seen those videos, which is why we get all these questions. You know, like, what do I do in the morning? How do I go to the bathroom? How do I get out of the van? How do I take a shower? What do you do if you don't have money to take a shower at Planet Fitness? Um... How do you clean dishes? Very basic stuff, um, but they are actually very important if you're, you know, trying to go um, living in a van and you've never done it before. It can be kind of scary not knowing, you know, where you're going to go to the bathroom 
or how you're gonna stay clean you know how do you stay in touch how do you deal with if you don't even have money for um, a monthly phone service how do you survive like that my old videos talk about all that because not only they talk about it they show it because that's how we started like I said I had three dollars in my pocket I did have um, at that point YouTube was I think let me think I think YouTube was still not earning it was taking like three months to earn fifty dollars or a hundred dollars in three months and then um, I ended up getting a settlement for the accident, but the settlement was only like $2,000. And it ended up paying for Little Blue, Little Blue 2. Because <laughs> Little Blue 1 was totaled. So I didn't get a huge settlement, even though the guy was obviously at fault. But the way things are in Florida, and I guess maybe even in other states, um, if somebody hits you and they're uninsured, then your insurance has to cover it. And if you're like me and you didn't have the best insurance, you only had a $10,000 limit, that's as high as it'll go. Um, and if the other person is insured, but you know they only took minimal coverage, it'll only cover $10,000. So the guy that hit me hit me and another man, he hit two cars. So we had to split his insurance payout, which they paid out $10,000. I got $6,000. He got four thousand dollars. You know the guy that see there was a guy that hit me and shoved my car into the car in front of me. So the car in front of me got four thousand dollars, which doesn't cover his stuff either, his medical bills and his damage on his car. Even though it was not as bad as mine, was probably at least six or seven hundred dollars just for to deal with a bump in his bumper. But my car was totaled, and they took my van, my, my little blue one, and. Um, you know, I had $2,000 cash that came to me, and out of that I had to pay the OT, I had to pay the ER, and I had to pay the attorney, which of course I couldn't. <laughs> the attorney did make sure he got his cut. His cut was, I think, I think the attorney took a whopping $1,000, and then I think um, PT, physical therapy, took like, I don't know, it was six or $800, which was way under what they were supposed to get. And then the um, ER got like two or four hundred dollars, and I owed money to all of them except for the attorney who wrote everything off. He took what you know. He was the one who did everything. He got he got his full amount, but um, he had told me that you know if we sued um, Geico, which is actually my insurance company, but also the the guy's insurance company and the guy that hit me, if we sued him, then um, what would happen is I would win. But it would just be on paper. So even if I won like a million dollars, which I could, for the damage and also my life being ruined. <laughs> you know, my back is all messed up. You guys hear about me going numb and all that. It, that may be part of it is when he hit me, my back got all bent out of shape and my nerves got all pinched. And now, years later, I'm semi-paralyzed, you know. Um, but basically, that kind of stuff, you can win on paper. And because it's an old man, you know, who didn't really have much, um, I just get it on paper. Uh, the, the insurance company only has to pay the $10,000. That's all they're liable for. They don't have to pay more than $10,000 because that was the man's coverage. And that was all that he was required to have to drive in the state of Florida. And if I sue the man for $10 million or $1 million or 100000 or whatever, I would have probably won because I was injured and I can prove I was injured. And, you know, I was in PT and they can say, you know, and even the ER and stuff, all the scans and the 